Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. In this video, I'm going to show you how to waterproof radios and other electronics. Now, for prepping, uh, we need reliability. And boating has taught me that, you know, the, the value of waterproofing uh, electronics. And I had to send my uh, Minion SDR for repairs because it was uh, splashed a bit with salt water and it just stopped working. And that's the nature of the beast. Now, I had my uh, Weber MTR with me as well and it got splashed a little bit on the outside. So just the BNC here has a, bit of, a little bit of corrosion in it, as you can see. Uh, what I want to do is I want to waterproof the circuit board. So I found something actually uh, uh, in the uh, drone community because uh, people want to protect their drones. The drone falls in the water or gets splashed with rain or I mean, uh, you know, a waterfall or whatever it is. Uh, they use a product called Conformal. And Conformal uh, comes in uh, little bottles like this. <laughs> and I'm using a glove, yes, because even from here I can smell that stuff. It's, it's horrendous. The foulest smelling chemical I've ever ever uh, smelled and the bottle leaked a little bit and so even though I uh, I kind of tried to clean it but it's just it's just horrendous <laughs> it's probably not good for your health either that stuff is used for um, waterproofing circuit boards and that's done also once you use that little brush here and you brush the circuit board you use a UV flashlight. This one, I'll put the link uh, of this flashlight down below. Uh, it, I think it's about $20, something like that. Great quality, guys. It's amazing. Uh, very well built, and it gives you this UV light that you can see here. And that cures the chemical, basically. It's a little bit when you go to the dentist and they use that, uh, you know, when you get a root canal and they put that resin and they cure it with a, with a UV light. Same principle. So I'm going to do one side of the circuit board here on my uh, Weber MTR, just to show you. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, I hadn't seen this, but uh, I guess a little bit of water did get in. See that white stuff there? It's, that's salt. And uh, that will, uh, you know, long term, that would oxidize the board and cause problems. So. I'm going to clean that up with uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and then I'll apply the uh, conformal. I wish I had a Q-tip, but uh, I don't have Q-tips here. I'm not even sure they sell them anymore. That stuff is coming right off. The switches and the buttons uh, do take a beating in that case. And uh, they do oxidize and then you have problems. So hopefully uh, that won't happen. I haven't tested it yet, but uh, I can feel the switches harder than it used to be and it's not a good sign guys not a good sign i will not of course put conformal on the switches because if i need to replace them uh, i need to be able to uh, you know do that easily and that would not be very hard here on this uh, weber mtr but on some other radios they might not be easy to reach and that would be uh, that would be an issue but hopefully these switches are still good but i should really order some spares because i know uh, in the long term they're gonna give out all right so i don't want to unsolder the board i'll just oh careful <laughs> just put a few drops on the board and i'll spread it with a little brush i don't want to put any on these uh, adjustable capacitors there because uh, of course if i need to adjust the radio do an alignment later um, and <laughs> they'll be stuck so I just want to put that on the PCB and I can put some on the now it doesn't come off anymore all right all those components it's not coming off easy bottle is glass is glass so you can press on it all right let's spread it out that stuff is so bad it has eaten up the plastic the cap, I mean the inside rubbery thing here and actually I think that is the conformal itself. That's not a cap. Damn thing is just solidified in the bottle. Good thing I have two more. Same for the second bottle, solidified in the bottle. 
Ah, I think the glass is supposed to protect the uh, the content from you know ultraviolet light, and I didn't put this in the sun or anything. It it was in a dark place, but I think it's it was just enough light to uh, solidify it. And I have one left, and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do the whole thing. All right, last bottle. And that stuff isn't that cheap, you know. Oh, the smell is just so bad. Oh, darn, same thing. All right, I got enough out of that last bottle to uh, to do the whole uh, the whole circuit board here. Unfortunately, I put some on the on and off switch, so I left it on on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that might be a problem. So uh, kind of uh, you have to be really careful uh, to not put that stuff where you don't want it. I'm going to use the light, the UV light. And actually it's showing me where the, the chemical is and where I missed, which is kind of interesting. See here, I missed here the, a big uh, rectangle. So I'm going to adjust that and here next to the label. So that will cure the chemical. I don't know how long I have to do this. So they say you can just leave it in the sun for a few hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, just a couple drops to... Uh, Finish the job here, yep, and here, one drop, okay. I have to order more of that stuff because I have more radios to do and I have drone electronics to do so. I'm probably going to get another brand because these bottles are not, are not good at uh, keeping the product fresh, so to speak. So um, I found those on eBay. So if you see the same bottles on eBay, uh, you might want to get something else. What I'll probably do also is build a stand for uh, my uh, flashlight here. 3D print a uh, UV flashlight stand uh, so I can just <laughs> leave that curing by itself. I don't have to hold the light and I don't know how long that's supposed to take. Sometimes you have to think out of the box or use one. All right, I hope you will find this useful. I uh, decided to uh, use that stuff on all my kits from now on and probably on older ones too. I'm even thinking of doing my K1 like that uh, because of course the radios that you can't replace that are hard to find, uh, you want to protect. And uh, you know, sometimes having them in a like a Pelican case or something like that isn't really enough because of course you have to get the radio out of the case to use it. So. Uh, I think it's a really good idea to uh, to use that uh, the conformal and uh, you know cure it properly. That's important, and then your radios uh, you know might last much longer than uh, otherwise, especially if you use them outside. Have a good one.